Welcome everyone to Sharing Soulful Stories. Today I'm here with Simran Gole. Welcome Simran. Thanks Joe for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you here. I'm going to just read out for everybody else a little bit about more what you do and they will see why I'm excited to have you here. So Simran is an artist, a spiritual mentor for progressive light workers and spiritual seekers. She helps hundreds of passionate, forward-focused women to unlock their soul's purpose and master their manifesting power and reclaim their gifts, sorry, reclaim the gifts of their spirit through the power of their galactic heritage. Simran's work focuses on empowering light workers, particularly people of marginalized groups, with the tools necessary for their own journey of self discovery, creating fierce boundaries, standing firm in their unique truths, and forging their life path and purpose on their own terms. She does this through her progressive Starseed podcast, Soul Readings, and her content on social media. Her work is inspired with elements from her deep love of science fiction, Eastern philosophy, the Akashic records, and ancient alien theories to take the confusion out of interplanetary soul lineage so more people can easily and practically live lives that honor their gifts from their soul's lineage. Wow, I love that. I'm so excited to talk to you about that. You are officially yeah. the first person that has alien in their bio. So I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so I have kicked off all of these interviews. As you know, we're here to talk about spirituality. And every interview I have begun with the question, what does spirituality mean to you? Yeah. So for me, it's really simple. I know like, Everybody has their own definition and some are very deep and very poetic. But for me, it's just the daily commitment of coming home to yourself. Love it. Thank you for, for offering us what can be such a beautiful, simple, meaningful and yet accessible description of as you point out what could be a you know zen like um poetic description so i just love that yeah. thank you thank you yeah thank you. yeah and those descriptions have their place like they're great but for me it's literally just that because whether it is through a religious process or through you know, like an actual like belief system. It's all about coming back to self and and that oneness because it's like, okay, yeah, we're all one, but it's it's also the individual process too. So you know? I know. I absolutely get it. I love that. I love that. And so I wonder having that beautiful um way of simplifying what could be a crazy big topic. Um has spirituality always been part of your life or has there been some sort of event that triggered you into this journey yes yeah, so my spiritual practice as it stands now not my entire life but I've always been immersed in some sort of spirituality um, my spiritual practice is very much it's been a pretty wild ride I was raised southern um, American southern baptist so actually American southern black baptist um, originally in my upbringing so christianity was really a huge part of my path but i was always into science fiction in a way like i was always very much a nerd and it was more than just me being a huge battlestar galactica and star wars fan it was i it's like i felt deep down like i've lived this before and so then through my teens i had I had several spiritual awakenings just to make a long story short because it's a huge like long long story but to make a long story short I had stumbled across um I started learning more about like new agey type things I had stumbled across the the theory of star seeds and past life recollection and just throughout a two and a half year period of coming to understand what that was and how a lot of what the 
the concept of your soul being from another planet and being from another galaxy just made so much sense to me and having readings that confirmed it and it just through a process became what it is now with a lot of the star seed ancient alien theory so in to answer your question yes i've been i've had a spiritual practice my entire lifetime but it's been it's been a multiple evolutionary process to how it's gotten here so it's been an interesting ride i i love though that that you share that because one of the things i think um comes through this a little bit in these conversations is that people are almost um, fall upon something or are guided towards it or whatever it might be that comes into their lives. And there is some sort of resonance or some sort of truth in it for them. You know, it's not necessarily for everybody, but for some reason you went, there's something in this for me. It feels different. It feels bigger than just a, a fictional novel or whatever there's something yeah. more here and I just I love you sharing that in such a um on a topic or in an area that I know a lot of people might be like Whoa, okay that's that's interesting oh, yeah. but I also know how many people are coming out and going oh, my god yeah I never really felt like I belong here I, you know there is yeah. this little piece of me that feels like I don't belong here this doesn't feel like home for me which is yeah. Anyway, I will stop talking and I'll ask you, um, can you please share your spirituality story? You know, any highs and lows that stand out for you that have brought you from that place to, you know, where you are and what you're standing in now? Yeah. So the biggest turning point for me was, and I know this is, this is something that comes, it's always a shock to people who, um, who are just meeting me or even people who have known me for a little bit, but they never knew this part of my story. But I, there was actually a time where, like I said, there was a lot of transitions in my spiritual journey personally, but the, it was the biggest transition when I got pulled out of my previous career as a professional makeup artist in kind of starting to get into like the spiritual guidance, the teaching type coaching realm and it was actually in part because I almost went to jail and yeah and I was in a situation where long story short I was helping out a friend of a friend and we were in a store and they were taking things that they were not paying for and it turned into this whole like guilty by association thing even though I wasn't doing anything and and long story short through a series of unfortunate events I was looking at possibly spending six years in prison and so there was a situation where it was like okay you need to basically figure out um with my lawyer play it down and basically I would have to say that I was guilty and then if I do that then I the worst case scenario is I'll spend 90 days three months in my city jail versus my state um state prison and so in the thick of that just really being forced to lean in to my faith um and in my spirituality because at that point it was just okay crystals are cute meditation's fun when i feel like it like um and this is more of like a fun thing an exploratory thing but it wasn't like this is my life like this is real like I having that reality that recollect that revelation that this is real this is here and just really having to rely on that and just that that the two months of just being in terror and not knowing like okay am I gonna not see my family for years and years am I gonna basically be a felon and like all this and basically long story short just I, you know, pulling cards and getting readings like I'd never gotten readings before and praying like I'd never prayed before and just knowing that it was going to be okay and having to trust in a way that I had never trusted before. And I just remember all these readings that I was getting, it was like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm paying you guys. So you're just telling me that it is because there's no foreseeable way that this is going to be like fine. Like, you know, like there's just no way, but it's just, I'm 
trying to grasp some, some semblance of, of like comfort. And so I get to the court date and they found me guilty, but then the judge waived my jail sentence. Wow. For the three months. So I didn't have to go to jail. And it was in that moment because of all the odds that my lawyer was telling me, he was like, you know, like the judge that we have, he's older and um, it should be, or no, the judge that you have is younger and they usually have something to prove. So this, this is something where it's like, just to prepare you, it may not be good, blah, 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 but we'll like hope for the best. And just for that to ha happen. And that's when I knew, okay, like, because one of the prayers that I prayed before that court date, one of the last like big prayers I said, because for years, um, one of my spiritual teachers was like, oh, she would call me a way shore and she said, okay, way shore, it's time to start way showing. And I'm thinking, no, I'm just going to have my makeup YouTube channel and, and work for these top makeup brands and be a makeup artist. And that sounds good. And that's for you. That's for, you know, the, 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 the shamans and the people like that, that work is for you. And I just kept fighting it. And She's like, okay, way show it's time to start way showing. And then I said, okay, God, if you get me out of this pickle, I will do what you want me to do. <laughs> and so in that, so after that court date, I said, all right, I will do <laughs> the spiritual work that I know that I'm feeling called to do, which led me to, which led me down even more like miraculous pathways and, and things. And like I said, they're like, I could write a whole entire like book just on my own spiritual journey, just with all the things that happened. But, but that I would say to answer your question, like one of the biggest turning points was, yeah, when I, when I almost went to jail for something I didn't do. <laughs> wow. And yeah. as you say, like having that faith or trust or um, connecting to that, uh, I can't feel it right now. I'm frightened. I'm, you know, in terror of what might lay ahead of me. But there's, yeah. you know, there's like, I'm trusting that there's a higher purpose here. And you know, maybe there's a lesson. I can't even imagine what was going through your minds. That must have been terrifying. Thank you so much yeah. for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, we do have time if you want to share a bit more about your, you know, any other... The miraculous path that unfolded once you said yes. Okay, so there was a yes to that, which then led to me being in two cults. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Um, so there was that. So the one was, so that's when I went to go live in the, that was my I call it my period of running away to go to the to live to go to the circus like when people talk about like I'm gonna run away and like go join the circus like that that's what I call my that this like two and a half like three four year time in my life and so I had stayed in this ashram which was actually how I got the name Simran that's not mm -hmm. the name my original name that I was given at birth and um and just learning and just really trying to figure out what it what was my truth and then the second call I won't actually give the name but anyone who knows Hollywood and any like interesting documentaries on a major American news network can pretty much drop hints to what I'm talking about <laughs> where there's lots of celebrities involved in it um and very based in science fiction which is how I was drawn and got into that because the whole science fiction thing got to me um and so dabbling in that for a little bit and then realized that it was not very cohesive and in a good place for me to be so then um left that left that after eight and a half months and that didn't quite work for me and so then I, I that's when I realized that organized religion and organized like an actual specific belief system didn't really work for me. And then I was led to um, a lot. Some people know about the work of Edgar Casey and some don't, but basically for those who aren't familiar with um, Edgar Casey, he's the most documented psychic in the 20th century in modern time. And he 
actually it was like the father the father of holistic medicine and going to trance like states and give readings for um health he did they um he offered readings on atlantis and ancient egypt and um, a plethora of things but his organization is actually in my hometown where i live in virginia beach virginia and um a friend had a friend had um contacted me and said oh there's a spot for their metaphysical bookstore you should apply and at that point it was really hard for me to get jobs because i had criminal record and it was stuff related so it was really hard for places to hire me so i'm thinking okay i'll just apply to it but they're not going to hire me because on the resume it says you have to pass a background check and i'm like all right well and so and that's a very like spiritual nonprofit organization that i'm really about and it's a really good place to be and 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 so i just remember applying and then like just through process of things basically they didn't really care about that state of my life and hired me and been working and i had worked there for four years and that's really the kickoff of where my spiritual journey started because i pretty much my day job was just immersed in holistic health spirituality starseed stuff with there's a they have the largest metaphysical library in north america so just going up there and reading all the books and being able to take classes and just be connected to a lot of local teachers and facilitators and even teachers and facilitators that um, would come and do conferences and workshops and and that was really when um, my path to becoming the way shower as my my spiritual teachers had been telling me okay it's time it's time had really begun and I was being nurtured and taken care of which really was the kickoff to what led me to be where I am now doing the work that I'm doing for other people just um yeah pretty much it's like there's so much that I really could there's so many stories that I could tell you that are just wild and crazy and kooky but but that's pretty much yeah like a kind of a short synopsis between the time of almost going to jail being in two cults within a four-year period and then joining this like beautiful like organization um, and coming to work there and then being able to afford to get um, like coaching training and and um, starting up my own um, practitioner business of like coaching and doing readings and um, getting comfortable doing readings on other people and and the present day like five six yeah we're going six years yeah six years later now yeah so yeah yay I'm glad I asked you to share a bit more because that was like wild that was wild anyway without the details of the wild moments in the wild um that you mentioned so that's amazing thank you for sharing that you're welcome yeah i hope it wasn't too rambly <laughs> no but stories are rambly so it's fine it's beautiful <laughs> um it's real so um my next question for you though is uh and i'm very curious about this one how do okay. you weave spirituality through life, through work, maybe even how do I, practically a little bit too. Yeah, how do you okay. weave it through? How do I weave it through? I've never really thought about that. That's actually a really interesting question. I mean, it's like I really, I really honestly just want to say that I like just live my life, because, but it really just is, and and. The thing is, too, I know it's a little bit different because um, I will say that I am, I am fortunate in the sense that my life and my work are all centered around spirituality because of the fact that I've had a day job that was at a metaphysical center. And then I have, you know, like this beautiful like practice where I get to work with amazing people all over the world that's centered in spirituality. But it's like, I'm thinking about, you know, just when you're in the grocery store, when you're in, when you're just driving in your car, when you're out with your friends, and it just really is, how do I, how do I weave spirituality in my daily practice is just that I always stay accountable in, am I actually practicing what I'm preaching? Am I, because I'm really big on utility. I use the word like, because one of the things that I talk about in the kind of the introduction episode of my podcast, the Progressive Starseed podcast, is how 
I very much believe in how spirituality has to have a utility behind it anyway. So there needs to be a utility behind it. And if there's not a utility behind it, then it's nothing more than spiritual entertainment. And just something that we do, just, it's like just something that's, that's no different than watching Netflix or Hulu or watching YouTube videos for just to pass the time and just to entertain but there's something that you do. So I'm always, I always ask myself, okay, like, how am I treating my family? How am I treating my friends? What, what's the health of my interpersonal relationships? How am I, how am I treating the person who is ringing up my groceries at the grocery store, the person that I'm standing next to in line with, or who am I holding the door for? Um, where I go or when I go out to uh, the karaoke bar that I like to go to every other week, like the person that's, you know, I'm serving, serving the room that I'm renting to do karaoke or just, or just giving myself the time to be free. How am I treating myself? Because it's all about, for me, coming home to myself, coming home to the totality of all that I am, which is all that we are as well in that sense and so it's just really that checking in with yourself and knowing that your spirituality doesn't begin and end at your altar table where you meditate or your you know meditation cushion or your yoga practice or it doesn't start and end there it's something that is from when you get up and when you go to sleep and I don't mean in this regimented way of like if you are like living in an ashram of where it's like regimented and scheduled, but it's just, it, it's with you every day. Like it's just, it's with you moment to moment. It's not just the card practice. It's just, it's how you're being like, and that's one thing that I ask myself, how am I being today? Oh, how yes. am I being in this moment? It's just, how are you being? Yes. I love that. I love that. I, I, if, if imagine if we all turned up like that, you know, the shift on the planet, if everybody, as you said, you know, how am I treating every person that I interact with in this moment, in each and every moment, I just, it's just, ah, I love that. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a perfect answer. I know you weren't sure what I was, what, what I was, um, seeking and a lot of people have said i like to meditate i like to journal i like to do da, 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 da. but i actually really love the answers where people are um sharing that they bring it into everything they do and i just yay my yeah. next question though is um what advice would you have for somebody new into this just you know just cracking open the door to exploring this coming home to self this relationship with self and what that means for them yeah yeah so the best advice that i could give to someone without knowing the, that person's individual kind of hang-ups or where they're stuck is just to not get caught up in all the options because there's so much out there um, and just to, it's easy to get overwhelmed. And so my biggest, my biggest thing that I can tell, that I can tell someone is to, the word I was going to use isn't exactly the right word that, but to not actually, Ooh, this is a better, this is a better adjective to not get caught up in the glitter of it all of like the who this is the, the shiny the shiny new thing like the ooh this the, ooh that like what what is it that you feel will make you what is it that you feel will help you to become the most you and to try that and to not get caught up in because we have so much celebrity culture and just the oh this person's really popular and oh the things that they offer are you know, whatever, like just fancy this, fancy that, and or just the cards and the journaling and the the this and the that, and it's like just to not get caught up in the the glitter of it all, the theatrics of it all, because some of it really is theatrical. 
and I don't mean this that in like a shamey kind of way but it just it is what it is and I'm just speaking truth it just it is what it is but it's just because it's not because at the end of the day it's not a show it's not a contest it's not a race um and it's really not even a ladder to climb to really need to become above like what we are it's just being able to embrace more of who we are and to become more of who we are is really the thing it's really not about changing um because it's really we become out of bounds because we've been taught to change from the moment that we were born and so that's why i bring so much emphasis on coming home to self and just being becoming more of who we already are because there's nothing to add there's nothing even really to fix that's just giving ourselves permission to reclaim the parts of ourselves that were made wrong mm -hmm. by um, the structures and societies and the systems that have been set in place and so that's really it because the one thing the most common thing that I see with people who are new in the spirituality is just that they don't know what to pick first and it's just really just the big amount of variety and just the overwhelm of it all and that really none of that stuff none of the none of that stuff matters it's not the tools that really matter um they're helpful which is why they're tools but um you're it's just you're not going to pick the wrong thing and so just yeah just picking what feels right and what you, what you feel is going to help you become more of yourself and to just go with that and to take your time and to not get caught up and and especially with the FOMO because that's really where it really stems from that just that fear of missing out and that everything really is um in the right time in the right space for you and that's pretty much it and to use discernment so I guess those are my three things yeah just in discernment as well there's a long list of things I could say. Yeah. <laughs> and as you point lot. out, you know, you're talking to this <laughs> invisible someone that you know nothing about. So, um, uh, you know, yeah. advice isn't, isn't as easy or directed or as, but all of those were amazing things to yeah. share. Thank you. I know exactly what you mean about that. Um, yeah. The sort of that, the glittery aspect or the the shiny object thing or the oh if i it almost becomes an if i have that then i'll be happy thing rather than um mm -hmm. you know that that as you say is just it's a tool and the tools can be helpful what you're what we're really hoping for is that coming back to self place so thank you that was just beautiful Yay. Yay. Thank you so much for being here with us. And I would love to um, complete with, can you share a bit more about what you do and how people can go about finding you if they are curious to connect? Okay, cool. So, so basically as Joe, as you've so awesomely like introduced me, like I'm Simran, of course. Um, so I am the progressive star seed. So mo that's my handle on Instagram. You can find me there. I'm not really as active on Facebook right now, but you can find me at, um, at the progressive star seed. Um, also with my podcast. So I have a podcast called the progressive star seed podcast. That's on iTunes, Spotify, um, SoundCloud, Stitcher, um, Basically, anywhere you can find a podcast, you can find this podcast. I've, 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 been, I've, con I've made the conscious choice to make sure that that podcast is acceptable on all platforms. So anywhere, wherever in the, the world you are, you can find it. Um, you can find me at um, theprogressivestarseed.com. Um, I have, yeah, that's pretty much where you can find me if you want to see about like working one-on-one. -on -one. I do soul readings. Um, coaching programs where we go into your galactic heritage and figure out how to leverage all of your beautiful awesome gifts I have a quiz that you can take to find out if you are in fact a star seed and of course like I said really mostly my Instagram and my podcasts are really the meat and potatoes of where you'll find most of the information that I have to share with the world and that's pretty much it yay wow awesome. amazing I want to go do your little quiz and find out <laughs> <laughs> um love that thank you so much simran it's been awesome 
having you here and adding that flavor to this whole summit and um and spirituality i'm really grateful to have you thank you you're welcome thank you for having me so 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 welcome i just am enjoying having these conversations so much i'm learning so much from myself <laughs> you have to put it out there for everyone else so there we are everyone that's uh simran the progressive star seed for you i hope you enjoyed it would love if you throw out comments or questions or any um takeaways would love to get engaged in a conversation um and stay tuned because there's more to come so much love bye now <laughs>